Thank you for your prayer. And uh, uh, I was telling a few before we started that I got my, my message got edited, which is a good thing because then I know it's more what he wants than what I think he wants. Praise God. So I'm really excited about this revival because I know I need it too. Yes. And uh, it's an awesome thing, Brother Tim, with you preach and his buddy is blessing your heart. <laughs> and you're just feasting on it too. So I thank the Lord for his helping hand. And I appreciate you. And I want to say that I thank you for your prayers. Uh, please just keep praying. And, uh, I really would like this revival as, as I was thinking about it today. I'd really like to see someone get saved. I'd like to see a real soul saving Holy Ghost changing revival. And I have been to one that I was skeptical about years ago. I don't know how many of you might have heard about the, the Brownsville revival. Uh, I was skeptical of that. Uh, but my brother, who uh, got saved and come to the Lord, which was a total surprise to myself and my family, he had a desire for anything of God, and he wanted to go to it. So he wanted to go by himself. He said, would you go with me? And I was pastoring down in South Alabama at the time, and, and I said, well, it's not too far of a drive from here. And I said, okay, I'll go with you. And the whole way, and, and I was trying to say, well, you know, tell my brother, I said, well, you know, you know, it might be a little odd, you know, I hope you're not disappointed. But, folks, when I, I tell you what, what I saw was, I saw people lighting up like two hours before it started. I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought it was a Disney World or something. I couldn't believe the lines. I was like, what in the world is going on around here? So went in, and yes, there were, there was a lot of flesh, sure, I saw some of that, but those were those that were in themselves. But those that were in God, I was blown away. I knew right off, God was in that. Now, it might not have been a healing revival, it might not have been a sanctification revival, necessarily, it might not have been a baptism of the Holy Ghost revival, it might not have been any of those, but it was a soul-saving revival. Because they were, there were, the, the police were bringing drug addicts uh, and offenders to that revival. And those people were getting saved every night. I was blown away. I felt such a love of God in that place. And I, I, I don't know if I can remember that uh, Steve, somebody, was the evangelist. It was totally unplanned. It was, uh, you know, it, 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 nobody expected it. It just started. And uh, they just wanted, they were so sensitive uh, to try to be obedient to God through that whole revival as best they could. And I, I, of course, I know it played out eventually, but what got my attention was that God was in it because of the word. And I was shocked. I was expecting to hear, you know, like a prosperity, you know, God's good all the time, bless you everything's good kind of message. No. I heard such a holiness or hell message that it made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. There was no compromise. That evangelist preached that if you speak in tongues in this church and you go out here to a restaurant and you're rude and you're ugly to a waitress or waiter because they messed up your order, whatever, you know what he said to them? He says, you're not saved. You're a backslider. That's the kind of preaching I heard in that revival, Brother Hawkins. He said, don't, don't be speaking in tongues in this church. He told the people. And go out here and be like the rest of the world and be rude and be ugly. He says, you're a backslider. You're not saved. I mean, it was that hard. But it was love hard. It wasn't harsh hard. It was love hard. And I mean... They were taking people up to get baptized in the baptismal, and they didn't know what was coming on them, but they were shaking and quaking the whole time they were getting baptized up there. And I knew what was happening. I knew what was going on. They couldn't even hardly testify that the Spirit of the Lord was moving on people. So I was, I went back away from that realizing that uh, uh, I don't have a monopoly on God, and God works in unique and mysterious ways. And let's face it, 
He's Almighty God. He can do whatever He wants to do. Praise God. So uh, I want us to enter in uh, to what He is doing because that's what is most blessed. I want to be a part of what God is blessing. Amen. Don't you? Amen. I want to get in that position, in that place of favor with God. That I'm no longer in control of what's going on. But God is the almighty authority. And he starts calling the shots. And it's getting under the government of God, which I believe is the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The question was asked in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 14. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? This was asked by the servant of Elijah, Elisha, who just received that ministry mantle of Elijah and was now standing at the brink of the Jordan and he took the mantle of Elijah and did the same thing that Elijah had just done just a little while ago. And the same miracle working power showed up. Praise God. We need that same miracle working power today. The Brownsville revival will not come back, but we need a revival in the church of God that gets this world's attention, praise God. And if we want to see that kind of manifestation of a work and move of God, then we're going to have to let it be taken out of our control and put in God's control. The Holy Ghost will have to tell us when to get up, when to eat, when to sleep, what to drink, where to go, of everything to do. I'd rather be a robot for God than have my own will, praise God. Then I'd know I'd be saved and always saved then. Because I'd just be a robot for God. But God didn't desire to make us to be robots. He wants us to willingly become that sacrifice that costs us everything. He wants us to become a living sacrifice where we do it out of love, out of an affection, a passion for God, where it is a fire that burns within us that is unquenchable, praise God. Hallelujah, Lord, help us. Elisha was sent on fire. For God. And he wanted a double portion of responsibility, a double portion of ministry, a double portion of effort. Praise God. Is that a hard thing? I hope our attitude is it's not the hard part that I'm looking at. It's for the glory, the greater glory of God that I'm looking at. I want Jesus to look as the best option in this world today. Amen. There's a lot of options and we can't take the other options away, but we can make Jesus the best option that the world can behold today. Praise God. I want to live and work such a ministry as that that makes our Lord Jesus Christ the best option in everybody's sight. Praise the Lord. If people choose less, that'll be on them. But I want to do my part to make Jesus look the very best to the world today. The song said he is the answer for the world today. I want to live that out for people to behold and see and know. Praise God. Amen. The question was asked. I want to look at a dynamic in Judges chapter 6. And in this we see a, a familiar personality from the Old Testament. And I want to start reading here at, uh, looks like verse 11. And in verse 11 it says, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained to Joash the Abiz Ezrite, and his son Gideon. Fresh wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said <clears throat> unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. But Gideon's response was somewhat contrary to that statement. And Gideon, because Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? 
And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. And as I read that, and I was thinking earlier today, that was a very good question. But the angel never answers the question. You notice that? <laughs> He doesn't really answer the question. But the question was already answered sometime back. And I reflected back up in verse 10. In the last statement of verse 10. But ye have not obeyed my voice. There's your answer. Disobedience. Got them where they were. And I know it's a sad state of affairs because maybe Gideon felt like uh, he was a pretty fair guy. He was doing the best he knew to do. Uh, he was trying to be a good and faithful man. Uh, he just wanted what was right uh, for himself and for his family. And uh, he didn't want to hurt or, or defraud or cheat anybody. He felt like it was unfair perhaps. So he had questions. He was concerned. But look what the Lord said in verse to, to him in verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of Midian. Have not I sent thee? Praise God. Here is someone who's, I would say, disillusioned. Jaded, feels maybe somehow defrauded, is definitely not satisfied, is stressed, working all the harder just to get ahead, just to keep somewhat of an advantage for him and his household. And then God out of the blue comes to him in this divine encounter and Gives him a, a, a marching order to say, go in what you have. Go in what you are and accomplish this great feat. Praise God. Now, how many of us would be comfortable with that? When we love a Holy Ghost blessing so much that we want the Holy Ghost blessing first before we start marching out for the Lord. But I find over and over in the Word of God that God is going to tell us to do things in spite of how we feel or what we think. It's according to His glory and His greatness, praise God. So it becomes more a matter of getting under His influence and getting under His control than it is trying to get things squared up in ourselves and feeling good about ourselves and first having a pep rally before we play the game. I can understand that in the physical, in the carnal. But we'd like to puff ourselves up and, and pump ourselves up and prime ourselves up before we face an opponent that's probably of greater skill and size and agility. And we're probably going to have a, a rough time if we come out on top. We'll have to really earn it. We like to feel good about what's going on spiritually before we're a task with a ch challenge. Amen? That's just human nature. But our God is so great and our God is so powerful that sometimes, uh, just out of the blue, He's going to ask you to do something for Him. And it's not going to be easy, but let me tell you this, it's going to be worth it. I've made some sacrifices, and I'm not trying to brag on myself, but I've made some sacrifices. I've had a good house. I've had a good job. I had things going my way. And I was trying to maintain an advantage for myself and my family. Trying to stay a step ahead of the devil. That old squatter. <laughs> Amen. And then the overseer calls you. And he says something like this. I've got a church way over yonder somewhere. 
and I can't get a pastor to go to it. Will you go to it? And I'm like, oh, brother. <laughs> Let me pray about that. Amen? Amen? And then your wife tells you, it better be God. <laughs> it better be God. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay, honey. I, 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 get the, I get the message, okay? <laughs> so you can imagine the stress of that situation. I've got a a very austere, let me say it this way. This overseer was an austere man. And no didn't ride well with him. Okay? And if I got, you know, puffed up in myself and I had delusions of Granger or whatever and I really wanted to be somebody and I said yes to him, just look at his split, then the ride with my wife was also going to be quite bumpy as well. <laughs> so either way, I was kind of stuck you know what they call it, what that, Catch-22? So anyway, I, I remember it vividly. I had emotions going this way and that way, and I had thoughts going this way and that way. And I went out in this old run-down shed. I went out there, and I laid down on the dirty, nasty, where I normally parked the lawnmower. I laid down there on that old, dirty, nasty concrete. Because I really wanted to be humble before the Lord. And I really just was trying my best to show him I, I really need your help, Lord. So as I laid out there in that old run-down shed, I started praying my platitudes. I started praying my fancy prayer. But somewhere in there, I realized I wasn't getting nowhere. So I just had to say, okay, you know what, Lord? I'm doing all the talking, but I'm not doing any listening. I'm just going to get quiet now, and I'm just going to listen to you. And the next thing that happened, I'll have to say, I didn't really like, but I got the Lord's point. I had one overseer saying, son, will you take this church? But you know what I mean when I'm asking you. And I had my wife saying, it better be God. So if it's not, you know what's going to happen to you. <laughs> and then I had God himself say to me, no, if he's come to ask you, it's me moving him to ask you. And I said, okay, Lord, but Lord, what if I do otherwise? And the Lord basically said, is there, is there, a, you know, is there an otherwise than salvation? Do you want to stay saved? It's kind of what the Lord said to me. It was that harsh. Kind of like that preacher at the Brownsville Revival. It was holiness for hell. It was the Lord said to me, you know what the consequence is going to be? The devil's coming in, and you're not going to be able to evict him. And I knew what the answer had to be. I got up. I was no longer afraid to face my wife. I was no longer afraid to face that overseer. I went straight to my wife, and she said, well, what's the answer? What's the decision? I said, we're moving we're selling the house. I'm giving up a good job. We're packing up our baby girl. We're going to go hundreds of miles from here where we don't know nobody. We're going to go from the frying pan into the fire. Amen. And I told, and the overseer said, what's the answer? I didn't hear all about it. I said, we'll take it. Because I knew what the alternative was. It would be a place without God. Right. Bless Ooh. Bless Ooh, God forbid. And the Lord got me thinking about a scripture that we're all well familiar with. And we like to claim. Because I believe it is a part of our dispensation. And it, uh, it really explains uh, what's going on uh, with us. Even... In this hour, and I'm just having to do this one by the seat of my pants here, but the Lord showed it to me and, and brought me back to it. But I believe it's in Zechariah. In Zechariah chapter 13, where we where the Lord is talking about that third part. Amen. 
where God said, and I will bring, verse 9, I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and I will try them as gold is tried and they shall call on my name and I will hear them and will and I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. I had to kind of live that out. I, 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 I realized that I needed to say that the Lord is my God even though he asked of me everything. Even though he asked of me a hard thing. Even though uh, it is so, so be it. I'm going to give it praise God. Because the alternative would be horrific. And I thought about what does it mean to be in that fire. And I feel like this might be a little bit of my spin on it more than anything. But uh, when I think about that fire, nothing likes the fire. The fire is hot. The fire burns. But it refines uh, and it will make you uh, be what you're supposed to be. While the Lord allowed some of that fire to get on me in that old woodshed. And I realized uh, that I needed to get a little purer. I needed to get a little more refined. I needed to do a little bit better. And if it meant giving up what, what was nice and comfortable and convenient, so be it, praise God. Because living in the fire is not where I want to be. And it's not where you want to be. Because it's a place where the presence of God is absent. It's a place where what's really on the inside is going to have to come out and take charge and take control. You don't want to be in the fire. Because it's a hard place. Let God withdraw His glory. Let God withdraw His spirit. Let things dry up in the local church and you're in the fire, let me tell you, because the quality is now going to have to come from the inside out to hold it together. So you're going to have to get it refined. You're going to have to get it pure. It's going to have to get perfected, praise God, if you're going to survive that kind of fire of the absence of the presence and manifest glory of God. Love and that fire touched me. It didn't take a lot, but it touched me. And I realized, oh, I know what I've got to do. So I packed. We packed our stuff and we went where we didn't want to go. And we, we just got over ourselves. We got purged of ourselves. And let me tell you, it was a sacrifice. It was a hard road. We had some struggles. We had some challenges. It was some tough things that took place on that uh, ministry. A uh, 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 journey. But let me say this. I was never so blessed. I saw God work miracles. I saw God come through when nothing else would. I saw literal miracles take place in my life. I saw God bless us up one side and down the other. I saw impossibilities made possibilities. I got the best job ever. I got a dream job. I got a job. My wife, when she looked at the requirements for that job, she'd come out of her mouth, you'll never get that job. You're not qualified for that job. But that's the exact job I got. Amen. The church couldn't support us. But God supported us. I, I was able to go to that church and preach sick. They could have had COVID-19 back then, Brother Anders. It wouldn't have mattered. I could have went to church and preached because I had the flu. I had, I had an old full-blown flu. I had the fever. I had the body ache. I was sick, sick, sick. But when there was church time, it left my body. I went to church and I preached. And when, when church service was over, it come right back on me like a nasty old... Blanket, wet blanket, it just come right up. And back in the bed I went. Then the evening time come around and it was time for church. He jumped off of me and I jumped up and went to church. But as soon as service was over, I was back sick again. But praise be to God, that's the kind of God I found in that place of obedience. Praise God. I got under his government. I was willing to get under the government of God. And he blessed me, praise God. And he'll do the same for you over and over again. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm speaking from experience. Hallelujah. And I moved from one to another. But each time it was always God's timing. It was God's will. That's what I told my overseer this time. Some of you probably know that I, I, I stepped down from a position. And I apologized to my overseer. I said, I don't want to be the black sheep of Georgia. 
I feel like I'm the problem child of George. I'm sorry, Brother Grimes, to be the thorn in your flesh. And I said these words to him, and I apologized to him. And I said, Brother, I don't understand this time. But I'm telling you, I, this is something that I have to do. This is God's time, and this ain't my time. He said, well, it ain't my time in either, brother. I know it. I'm sorry, brother. But, but I had to follow a spirit that was greater than my own spirit. And when I sat down to write that letter of resignation, let me tell you something. God helped me write it. He did. Because I didn't want to write it. That was a sacrifice. That was a hard thing to do. I had to be the bad guy. I had to be the fall guy. But so be it. I was going to obey God, brother. You ever had God put you out like that? But he only does it to bless you. Praise God. He's not going to deprivate you. He's going to bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. If he's ready to move you up, it's just in his timing. Hallelujah. Best services I've ever been in, they didn't go according to the program. It was God's program. It was a Holy Ghost government, praise God. The Holy Ghost took over. But there was people healed. There was people delivered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what I want. That's what you want. That's what we want, praise God. We're going to have to give God some more room around here, praise His holy name. He's ready to roll up his sleeves and flex his Holy Ghost muscles. Hallelujah. He's ready to do some awesome things for us. Praise God. But we are going to have to be like Gideon and finally got it together. And he became, praise God. He was a little bit, you know, shaky there with some weak spiritual faith blades. But, but they got strengthened up. The more the Lord blessed him, the more the Lord showed him, the more that he heard the more he experienced, brother, he finally got it. Where he said, that's it. I'm settled. I'm ready. Praise God. I want us to get settled. I want us to get ready. So if we've got to face a, a, a challenge far greater than we've ever faced before. A hard thing. Something that may make you look bad. It may, you may be a disappointment to others. To man. And let me tell you, it's not an easy road to go down. But if it's what God is calling you to do, then you better do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may have to step down from something. You may have to give up a time. God will compensate you for it. God will bless you. Hallelujah. He may call you to start something you never would have dreamed of. You never would have conceived of. It may be crazy to everybody. Everybody tries to counsel you against it. But you go ahead and do it anyway. God will reward you. God will bless you. Because what you do is you put your, yourself in that special place. Praise God. I want to look at you a little bit more in the Word of God here. This goes hand in hand. Couples us right along here. In Genesis chapter 26, we're looking at the patriarch Isaac. He experience some of this that I'm talking about tonight. Tough decisions. Some life altering uh, 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 actions that he had to make for himself and for his family. You know, us ministers, it does, it's not just about you. It's about your spouse. It's about your children. It's about your family. There's a lot involved there. And just like my wife will still tell me today, it better be God, brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She still tells me this. Like, it better be God. Listen, I'm trying to walk softly before the Lord. And I'm trying my best to make sure it is God. But when you know, then you know. And then you know what you got to do, praise God. And you're willing to go crazy for Jesus. I, I, I'm okay with that, praise the Lord. I want to go all out to the Lord. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 26. Starting at verse 3. God spoke to Isaac and said to Father, sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thee thy, and unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Praise God. I can 
bonafidely say today that because I've humbled myself and I have felt that fire and I've realized how to be refined, I've realized what it takes to get purified, I've realized to, to humble myself under the mighty hand of God and I've uh, tried my best. Uh, I haven't been perfect and I have made mistakes, but I'm trying my best to follow the leading of the Lord. I'll tell you what, uh, uh, that it has blessed my life. Uh, it's blessed my wife. Uh, it's blessed my daughter. And we've got a special blessing that's come upon our lives that's helping us. Uh, and it's all the ramifications of trying to be uh, sensitive to the leadership and the authority and the government of God. If you get under it, uh, you'll never regret it. Praise God. It'll change everything. Uh, oh, hallelujah. It'll change everything. Oh, God. But it doesn't mean he won't come and still ask you to do a hard thing. He may do it. But let me tell you, it's worth it. Hallelujah. It was perhaps a hard decision for Isaac to remain where he was and not to go to what sounded and looked like a better place. Amen. But he obeyed God. And God made all these promises in verses 3 and 4. But look at verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Praise God. We've got the same responsibility. There are statutes. There are commandments. There are spiritual laws. Amen. There's things that we need to be responsive to. Praise God. And if we'll live responsive to these things, there's going to be a blessing coming from heaven as heaven's response to us. Praise God. Amen. Moving a little further along there in the story, we know that he does what God asked him to do, and he is tremendously blessed. You drop down to verse 12. It says, And Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Hey, man, we need that. All of us do. It says, And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. He just went on and on. God was in everything Isaac was putting his hand to. Praise be to God. But it didn't mean he didn't have trouble. It didn't mean he didn't have conflict. There was a, a, even harassment and persecution against him and his household. But I love it when you drop down in the reading of that chapter and you get down there to verse 22 where Isaac finally positioned himself in this place and it says, and he removed from thence and digged another well, and for that they strove not, and he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, for now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Praise God. There's some key words and key phrases that you need to pay attention to that I feel that the Holy Ghost is, is putting forth here tonight to, uh, about to uh, be in place just right, to, about finding uh, 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 your placement in the Lord. Amen. And there is a blessedness there. There is an increase there. There's an augmentation there. There's a fruitfulness there. Praise God. Amen. This is a spiritual place. This is not a physical one now that I'm talking about. This is a spiritual dynamic that is real and genuine and true. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I know it sounds crazy, but I feel the Lord wants me to share something real quick to show you that God takes care of dozens like me. <laughs> He's good to us. Even when you put yourself in a bad position or place. Quite a few years ago, Brother Jimmy Brooks, who uh, was uh, stationed at Fort Rucker in Enterprise, Alabama. And because I was, I'd obeyed God, that's what got me down there to begin with. And come to become really good lifelong friends with Brother Jimmy Brooks and his family. And Brother Jimmy had this fantastic idea to have a, uh, a youth uh, camp out for a weekend. Right there on post at Fort Rucker. He got permission 
from the uh, post commander and uh, uh, set it all up and everything. And we were going to spend like two nights there camping out with the young people that were willing to come all from Alabama. Just, you know, pile in there, just have a good old uh, camp out in some of those uh, 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 buildings and things that some of the troops use when they do outings out in the woods and what happened. So, uh, Brother Jimmy, he, he, he stabbed me uh, before it got late in the day. He said, Brother Deeks, the water heater's not working right. I said, uh oh. He said, can you do something about that? Sure, I'll go take a look at it. So I went and I started tinkering on the water heater. Well, the big highlight of this whole thing, since he's a, an Apache uh, a helicopter pilot, was he was going to take all the young people down to the fire range. Oh, man, is that awesome. <laughs> he says they take old uh, cars and vehicles, and they take this kind of stuff out there like that. He says sometimes they'll build billboards because they want to uh, see what the firing uh, capabilities and how things are performing and if they're sighted in right and so forth. I'm talking about a multi-million dollar piece of equipment uh, that weighs uh, uh, over 17 and a half thousand pounds. This thing is humongous. This thing is high tech. It has uh, 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 night vision uh, capabilities. And Brother Jimmy showed that to us uh, that you can see things in total darkness and it shows even the body heat of what you're looking at. So there's no way that if somebody's out there hiding behind trees, even like, uh, you know, down on the ground is wherever, whatever, you're going to know, hey, that's a man with a gun. Pow, he's gone. I mean, it's got Hellfire missiles. It's got uh, uh, Hydra 70 uh, cannons. It's got uh, 30 uh, millimeter uh, uh, machine guns. This thing is a killing machine. It can take care of armored tanks. It can take care of, of uh, planes. It can take care of people on the ground. This thing is versatile. It is uh, mobile. It is awesome. And that's why Brother Jimmy is still flying today. And they're going to force him to quit. <laughs> they're forcing him out. Because let me tell you, he loves his job. He loves defending our country and, and helping other countries. Praise God. So anyway, uh, Brother Jimmy was going to take... All those young people down in the fire range. And I knew about that. And man, I was so fired up and I was stoked and I wanted to go. I said, I've got to be there. That's a special place. I don't want to miss this event. I've got to be a part of it. Okay. Guess what? He forgot about it. They loaded up and they took off. I finally finished with the water heater. I come out. I got it. Everyone was gone. I'm like, no way. I have no vehicle. They done piled up in their cars. You took off too, didn't you? I had no way to get there. So I had to walk. But I asked Brother Jim, I said, where is this? I'm here at night. You can hear those missiles exploding. I mean, I'm, it's where my, we live miles away, but you can hear it like, boom. I'm like, oh, man, that was a good one. Oh, man. And in fact, I could hear them starting to practice. And I'm like, oh, man, we're going to miss it. So I, thought, I asked Brother Jimmy, how do you get there? He said, hey, listen, it's not that far. In fact, he said to stay, you can almost walk there. That's it. I walked there. So I started, I said, I'll walk. I walked toward the sound. How simple is that? I walked toward the sound. So I'm walking toward the Hellfire missiles, 30 millimeter guns. I'm walking toward the sound. Well, I get about so far down through, the, through there. On, the road went to, to dirt roads. So now I'm walking on dirt roads. But I, I, I'm going so far, and all of a sudden it got quiet, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. What's the deal? So I'm walking out, and I finally come through the woods off these trails, and I'm in a big open alley. And I'm like, whoa. I said, okay. I thought, I thought this is where Brother Jimmy said the grandstands were, where they, all the big officials get out there with their binoculars, and they watch what's going on. So I'm looking for the grandstands. I'm looking for everybody's car. I'm walking down through there. And I'm not finding nothing. I'm going. I said, I must have walked like two or three, four miles. This is ridiculous. Where is everybody? I did not know I was in the wrong place. But I didn't know enough information that if I was in a restricted area, and Brother Jimmy already had said this in times past. He said, Brother Deeks, I know you work at the post at Fort Hunter. 
He says, but please be careful where you go. He says, there's restricted areas. All there is is warning signs. But if you mistakenly drive down one of these roads, you get off over here in the wrong place, you don't have the proper permission and papers and so forth. He says, bro, these, the MPs will arrest you. It will be government. It will no longer be that the state can't help you. The local sheriff can't help you. He says, I can't even help you, Brother Deeks. He says, if you get in trouble and get thrown in the in the pokey or whatever, here on post, he says, it, it's a government at the matter then. He says, you'll have to you'll have to go into a, a military court. He says, and they don't take that stuff lightly because there's too much high-tech stuff around here. He says, you'll get in big, big trouble. So I knew enough to uh, totally avoid getting arrested and watch out for the MPs. So I was really trying to be a, but anyway, but I knew enough about that. Well, I didn't know where I was for the longest until Apache helicopters come up over the tree lines and I've got like three or four Apache <laughs> helicopters that come up hovering over the tree lines. And I already knew about the ap uh, target acquisition technology. I already knew about the night vision technology. I already knew about this capability. I panic. I'm out in the open. I do not have time to run to the trees. Now, I'm doing all this, and I know you're loving it, but there's a purpose. I'm stuck out in the middle of this clearing. That's an alley. That's like, I don't know, football field league wide. And I'm out in this alley. There's nothing except some scruffy little bushes and trees. But they're all scruffy. Brother Rick, you're not going to believe what I did. I said, God, I need a miracle. And the only thing that came to my mind was hurry up, get on the ground, and try to look like a deer. <laughs> I've tried my best to look like Bambi curled up around the door. I'm serious. I know. I know what else to do. I thought if they would have seen me and called the MPs, I, I would have been arrested. I never could explain that good enough. I was on the firing range, and I did not know it. I was on the firing range, and they came over. Two of them went on, and one of them stayed right above me. I was like, oh, I'm toast. <laughs> I, I tell you, I took my head. I was, I was trying to keep my head from showing. And I tried to make, I said, oh, look like hooves. Look like hooves. <laughs> I was praying, God help me. That camera on the front of the fuselage the, was looking straight down at me. Hey, wherever the pilot looks, that's where those 30 millimeter machine guns look. He was stuck. He stayed over me for about 25, 30 seconds. You know why? Because him and his partner were looking on the infrared screen and they were saying, what in the world is that? <laughs> I don't know. I could have threw a rock and hit it because they were that close. I thought they are going to go right over here and land, and I am going to be so coached. <laughs> Folks, I, all I could do is say, oh, Lord Jesus, help me right now, Lord. But let me tell you, he did, folks, more than you'll know, more than I knew and more than you know. Let me tell you how much he helped me. He was already helping me, and I didn't even know it. Anyway, I, 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 was, I stayed there, and finally they went on, and I was like, thank God. Jumped up, and I started running back. Got back to the camp. Everybody was already back. Sister Deeds was backing up. They were going, Brother Deeds, where are you? Brother Deeds, if you're praying, please say something. <laughs> he thought I was out in the woods praying. He didn't know where I was. But I came back and I was panting. And I said, I'm here, I'm here. He said, where'd you go? I said, well, I went down here and I took a right. And I did this, did that. He said, oh, my goodness, Brother Deeds. That's where they were shooting. He said, oh, my goodness. I said, for real? He said, yes. He said, but let me tell you what happened. 
They, you heard it. They started shooting, and they were going, and man, the sparks were flying, and it, the kids were rooting and cheering, and they, they were loving it. And then all of a sudden, something spoiled it. I said, what? And then, <laughs> this fog come rolling in from the gates and front everything. They had to call it off, and they landed, they said, for about 15, 20 minutes. And then they said, well, the fog's not lifting, so they got up, and they decided to call it, you know, turn it, call it a night. Hey, folks, if they had been for that fall, I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be having this revival right now. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Even when we might put ourselves in the wrong place, God's going to take care of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, he spared me. I didn't even know how much he was caring for me that night. But, oh, let me tell you, I got alone that night, and I was thanking the Lord. I, it kind of hit me later, and I was thanking God. I said, Lord, thank you. I didn't know what I was doing. Hey, listen, sometimes we don't know what we're doing, amen, but God's going to take care of us. But what we do know, God wants us to be responsible for. God wants us to move forward in uh, what he will show us in his word, praise God. I've got one more thing to share with you tonight. This all goes together. Remember, we started with this question, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is that God that Elijah saw uh, uh, do those mighty uh, uh, acts of, of supernatural supply? Where was that uh, 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 God that provided uh, that healing and that helping when it was needed? Amen. In G Exodus chapter 33, we have this Dialogue going on between Moses and God and how wonderfully intimate this conversation is in Exodus chapter 33. When Moses says in verse 13, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, shew me now thy way. In other words, Moses was saying, show me the way you want it done, Lord. Show me the way that is right in your sight and pleasing to you. Show me how to live. Show me how to think. Show me how to make the right choices. Show me, Lord, show me, praise God, that I may know thee. I want to know why it's that way, because that will help me understand you, that I may find grace in thy sight. In other words, Moses is saying, I want to move up in my relationship with you, Lord. I want to get in that position with you, in that place with you that is pleasing to you, that makes you happy with me, because I want and need your blessings. It says, and consider that this nation is thy people. And this was God's answer. My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. In other words, God's saying, I've got it. You don't have to stress. You don't have to worry. I'm going to take care of you. I'll take care of the people. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. In other words, this was the passion of Moses telling God, listen, Lord, we don't want, I don't want it no other way. But if you don't, if you're not in it, I don't want it. But if you're in it, I want it. If you move, I want to be able to move too. It says, for herein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. He's asking a question. Will this not be the evidence? That you are truly, it's one thing for us to tell everybody, hey, the Lord's with us. But when you manifest your presence, when you manifest your glory, when you manifest your blessings and your favor, then others are going to know that something's different, something special about these folks. Amen. That God is with them. It says, uh, and that's what will make the difference. He says, we're going to be different. He said, separated. It's like, we will we, we. There will be a division between us and them, and the difference is you, Lord. I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. You can look that over there in verse 16 a little more if you want to. Verse 17. No problem with God. He loves this kind of request. It's like, the Lord said, got it. And the Lord said unto him, I will do this thing also. I love it when God says, hey, I'll do that too. I'll throw that in no extra charge. I'll do it because that's the kind of praying I like to hear. Hallelujah, let's thank the Lord. Amen. No extra charge on that one. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It says that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. But oh, I love this part. Moses heard these words. It sounded like a melodious music. 
to the spirit man of Moses, and he was like, oh, and he just, just got really radical and bold and said, Lord, let me see your glory. Let me see you. You showed me your hand. I've seen what you can do. Now I want to see you. Amen. And here's what God said. And he said, I will make, oh, God didn't even hesitate. He said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he said, thou canst not see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. And I want to declare to you, this same dynamic is available for you and me even right now. Praise God. There's a spiritual dynamic that we have that's equivalent to this. Praise God. For those who will be radically passionate and bold about their God. To step out there and say, God, show me your glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. God won't hesitate to say, oh, my goodness, I'll cause the past before you. And it's still true. In this flesh, we cannot see the face of God. It will disintegrate this flesh, man. He couldn't handle just a fraction of a second of the manifest glory of the face of God. But we can still behold the Lord in his glory, but in a different and unique way, praise God. I'll tell you why. There's a spiritual place. This is, I give credit right now to Brother Mike Nixon who shared this blessed perspective with me. God bless his soul. He said, Brother Deeks, there's a place. <laughs> I said, really, brother, tell me about it. And he did. And verse 21 tells us about it. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Now you can just let that remain in the context of between the conversation of God and Moses in ages past. Or you can see a spiritual dynamic that is very real and true and parallel for our day and hour right now. That there is a spiritual place. And you can stand on the rock, praise God. If you'll get in the word of God and you have the same kind of desire that Moses had. And you want to see the glory of God. God will lead you right to the place of standing on his word and when the Holy Ghost the author of that word shows up he'll cause all his goodness to be revealed to you praise God Amen. the world's got the book but that's all they got you have the advantage of the author you can experience the commentary and the conversation and the revelation of the author Hallelujah. There is a place, a spiritual place for those that are willing to get under the government and control and influence of God. You might find yourself out on the firing range of Satan and you are, are beginning to wonder what's going on. And you might find that you might be in a hard way. But listen, if you will just humble yourself and get under the mighty hand of God. And say, Lord, I've been reading for reading's sake. I've been meditating for my own meditation's sake. I've been searching the scriptures for my own sake. But I want to fall in love with the word of God. I want to have a passion for what the book is trying to get across to me. I want to behold your glory. You could have been satisfied with what God already gave. What God already granted. But Moses went a step further. How about you? How about you go a little bit further to be bold and just take a step you never took before to see the genuine living, breathing glory of God that's in that place right now. It's standing on the word. God has been with Brother Deeks over the years. I've got some other ones that you won't believe, but God's brought me through. God has brought me through some fire to make me to be a better, more obedient servant to him. But even though I've come this far, 
I know I'm not measuring up where I need to be. There's a spiritual place that's going to take nothing but all out passion and desire to stand there. And once you stand there, you will never want to go back nowhere else. Because when you stand in that place, there ain't no backing up. You're going to stand perfectly on the Word of God. You're going to live out the Scriptures. You're going to see the manifest power and glory of God. You're going to have to stand. I'm going to have to stand. And we can't back up off the Word of God. Praise the Lord. This is supposed to be the heart of the church of God. This is what makes the church the church. Praise God. When we get on the word and we stay on the word. Praise God. God will restore the glory. God will restore the power. God will restore it. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Because if you're willing, you're going to find yourself busy doing whatever you feel you need to be doing. And that's when the Lord is going to show up. And he's going to say go in this your might right now. And do what I want you to do. And you're going to be like huh? What? Yeah. It won't be according to your convenience. It won't be according to your timing. It won't be according to your overseer's convenience for timing. It ain't going to be according to nobody's convenience for timing. But God is God. And when God says go. Brother you got to go. When he says do it you got to do it. Praise God. But if you do it, you'll see the glory of God. You'll see the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I wouldn't be standing up here today if in those critical moments I had not obeyed God. I would not be here today. You would not be here today. you got your own testimony that's just as awesome and just as powerful as far as I'm concerned. You wouldn't be where you are today. Why are we here today? We are here today to make up our mind, to stand on the word of God like we never stood before. And to let him know we want to see the glory. And that we're ready to see the glory. Are you ready? There's an altar here where you can come tonight and get in this altar and make it a personal thing. Don't worry about the time. I'd like to see the kind of things we was seen in times past where people hit the altar and they forgot about the clock. They didn't know what time it was when they finally said amen. It might have been a quarter to midnight. But praise God, if you saw the glory of God, if you got a, a, a feeling re-energizing revival, listen, if you received what you needed to be the best you can be, then praise be to God. Hallelujah. I'm all for it, praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to lay down my job. I'm ready to lay down everything. And you could have asked us two years ago. You could have asked Sister Day, are you willing to give up everything? She told you a flat out no. And I'm not lying. And I probably would have backed her up too. Sister Pima I probably would have backed her up too. But now, ask me now. I'm ready. Forget it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it no more. If I thought it was, it ain't been no more. I'm ready to just throw it all away and say, God, show me your glory. You know what God's going to tell me? He's going to tell me, get on my word and don't you dare back up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You get on my word and hold on for it. It's going to be a ride and a half. But you're going to be ever so glad you took it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then it'll be the devil out on the firing range. Ooh, and he's going to catch it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll have my, my guns played in him real good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Anders, would you please come and help me give the altar call? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you.